Who is the youngest monarch in the world? How many planes has he bought up? Stay tuned for the answers to these questions. Hello, today we are going to talk about a sheikh with a fortune of around 10 billion dollars, the Emir of Qatar, Tamim bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. He is one of the world's wealthiest rulers. He is also considered to be the youngest monarch in the world. He is 40 and one of the youngest heads of state in general. His vast wealth is directly linked to oil and gas production. Accustomed to being bathed in luxury since childhood, the Emir has bought palaces and residences around the world, giving his mother department stores and entire fashion houses. His younger brother is used to living in the hotel where Pretty Woman, starring Julia Roberts and Richard Gere was filmed and spending time with the Kardashian sisters. Qatar, an Arab nation of around 3 million people, is considered one of the richest in terms of GDP per capita. One-fifth of the Emirate are subjects who enjoy every possible benefit and privilege and pay no taxes. Qatar produces nothing, even imports food from neighboring countries. At the same time, the state is considered a large consumer of luxury goods. The Qatari leader, Tamim bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, is particularly fond of it. The Golden Airliner Qatar's fourth emir has been used to being bathed in money since childhood. But for 40 years of his life, Al Thani has been careful not to draw the world's media attention to his fortune. How much money the Qatari leader actually has? It became possible to estimate only a couple of years ago when the monarch decided to sell one of his 14 planes, Boeing Palace, nicknamed the Golden Airliner. Inside, the airliner resembles an elite residence. It is believed to carry 460 passengers in its basic configuration. But after it was re-equipped specifically for the Emir, spending $370 million, it can seat only 76 people. The aircraft was not nicknamed the gold plane for nothing, as that color predominates in its interior. However, as people in the monarch's entourage have said, the Emir was bored with his luxury jetliner. In general, all his planes are very similar in their equipment and decoration. The furniture for them is made of precious wood and luxury leather. On board, the Emir and his family are served by several dozen crew members. The planes have huge lounges, reception areas, offices, cinemas and a couple of comfortable lounge areas, bathrooms and even a medical room with its own operating theater. It was rumored that one of its $500 million liners was a gift from the Emir to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan for his support in the conflict with Saudi Arabia. At the time, neighboring Arab countries severed diplomatic relations with Qatar, accusing it of links to terrorist groups. The Turkish leader was one of the few who came to Al Thani's aid. However, Turkish authorities have not commented on reports of such a lavish gift. The Emir travels abroad with friends and relatives on luxurious appointed flights. When he travels, he is accompanied by an entourage of up to a thousand people. It is true that they fly on different planes. Al Thani usually takes not only his numerous luggage bags, but also his limousines and the food from which his favorite dishes are prepared. The Emir most often flies to Paris to watch his football club PSG trainings. The Sheikh is also quite an influential figure not only in football, but also in the Olympic movement. It is no coincidence that the 2022 FIFA World Cup will be held in Qatar. A thousand and one palaces Al Thani has many palaces, not just in Qatar but around the world. The Amir Diwan, based in Doha, the capital of the Emirate, is thought to be the main residence. It is where official meetings and ceremonies are held. The Emir himself and his family live in Al Weiba Palace. However, he also has about 10 such villas in the country. The Qatari ruler has two palaces in Oman as well as luxurious villa on the beach in Muscat. In addition, the Emir built real estate in London. He owns part of the largest skyscraper in the British capital, several houses near Hyde Park, a mansion near Regent's Park, Harrods department store, and one of the few surviving aristocratic townhouses, Dudley House, with an area of 4,000 square meters in the central London district of Mayfair. For his father, the former Emir Hamad bin Khalifa, he built a huge palace in Morocco on the Atlantic Ocean, worth over $300 million, which the local media called the Palace of a Thousand and One Nights. 
The Qatari authorities are careful to keep information about the ruler, his three wives and twelve children out of the newspapers. The mother of the emir, Mozah bin Nasser al misnad is another matter. Her picture is never off the pages of the leading magazines. She is rightly considered one of the most daring, brilliant and influential women in the Arab world. She has been regularly praised by fashion houses around the world for her exquisite taste and dressing skills. And Mossad's political cloud is so immense that her Amir son is often accused of being under his mother's thumb and not making a single decision without consulting her. A child of his parents Amir Moses' mother married when she was 18. A student of sociology, she was immediately attracted to the crown prince. Her future father-in-law, the emir of that time, thought that such a marriage could be very useful to him. Mosa's father was a notorious dissident who criticized the ruler in power on every occasion. In the emir's opinion, only a wedding could put an end to the strife. So Mosa became the second wife of the crown prince of Qatar. After 18 years, she would rule her country with near sovereignty. The woman would become the monarch's favorite wife. The emir had three wives in all. He divorced the first one before he married Moza. He married a third much later. It is only known that she is a distant relative of the emir. She, like his first wife, was seen by very few people. Only Moza, who gave birth to her seven children, became a public figure. She used to accompany her husband Emir on different official and unofficial occasions and during all sorts of visits. The Qatari Foundation for Education, Science and Social Development, the Supreme Council for Family Affairs. In addition, the mother of the Emir is the Vice President of the Supreme Education Council and the UNESCO Special Envoy. For Qatar, such an active role for a first lady engaged in philanthropy and social activities was a novelty. Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom also honored by Moza by awarding her the title of Commander of the Order of the British Empire. She arrived in a long dress and a short ruby-colored bolero jacket. The clothes worn by the mother of one of the world's richest men are in keeping with Muslim tradition. Her arms are covered. Her legs are hidden behind the hems of long dresses or white trousers and she wears a turban that covers her hair. Musa usually chooses items in rich shades of gemstones, sapphire, ruby, emerald. In Europe, it is noted that Musa has become an Arab fashion lawmaker. Many have compared her to former French first lady, top model Carla Bruni, noting that Musa has outdone the French woman. An admirer of luxury brands, she persuaded the ruling dynasty in Qatar to fire the famous London department store Harrods and also insisted that the royal family purchase the fashion house Valentino for 700 million euros and then Balmain. The amount of the deal, however, is not specified. Spurred on by the purchase, Moza launched her own fashion line. When fashion houses tailor suits and dresses for her, she offers advice on adhering to Islamic tradition. She also collects vintage pieces from Yves Saint Laurent, from a time when there was the name of the house, Balenciaga and Chanel. The public eye is especially attracted to Moza's jewelry collection. Among them, there are modern as well as vintage ones by Audrey Lerie brands, including Cartier and Van Cleve & Arpels. Postmaster while the Qatari press carefully filters information about members of the ruling dynasty, the global media are not afraid to publish different news. In the summer of 2020, for example, the Los Angeles Times ran an article exposing a corruption scandal involving the monarch's family. At the center of the story was the 28-year-old brother of the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad. In 2011, when he was 20 years old, he flew in a private luxury jet to the United States to study at the University of Southern California. The new student first checked into the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, made famous by the film Pretty Woman starring Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. Sheikh Khalifa brought with him a huge retinue of servants, including bodyguards, chauffeurs, a butler, a nurse, a cook, a hookah maker, and a man who makes tea. In addition, an entire garage of the prince's favorite cars, worth several million dollars, flew to the US. His servants lived in rooms at $600 a night, while he and his friends choose suits overlooking Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. 
The student quietly skipped classes for safety reasons, attended games instead, hung out at parties with the Kardashian family, and blew money in Vegas. When exams were in session, the Emirates brother was on holiday in France, Britain and Monaco or falconry in Algeria. He took his final exams remotely, already in the Middle East. Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad's assistant simply brought the professor's exam paper in a suitcase containing a Rolex watch. Despite this, the University of South California awarded him a master's degree. In Qatar itself, however, no one condemned the prince. The fifth son of a former emir and his wife, Moza, is one of the latest in the ruling family to claim the throne. How many planes would you buy if you were a sheikh?